We are delighted to have all of you here this afternoon. To um, Governor Jim McGee, thank you for all you have done for early childhood, for the children, families, and educators. So we are excited for an announcement this afternoon from our governor. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a good day. We were able to announce today about the crossroads, this effort on the housing. I just got to uh, go to a great event where the speaker was honored as a person of the year, family services. And um, tonight, I uh, get to see my daughter on TV. So that's a pretty good night. And, uh, Channel 10 was at my house last night doing a, um, a video with uh, my daughter, and I actually think we're able to join in on a, a duet. I think we get to see two. <laughs> I, think you see, I, think, I think you get to see three seconds of that tonight. But it's great to be here at the uh, right here in Warwick uh, with the mayor. Continually, uh, I find myself in Warwick quite often. Sometimes I'm wearing a tie mayor, tie mayor. Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> but uh, thank you for hosting us here today. And. Um, Great at Little Learners, and it's great to be back here with Charlene and, 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 and your crew. So thank you for your work uh, that you do. It's, a, it's an important location because we did have a, a round table here uh, uh, a year ago and uh, talking about we're still uh, really um, in the eye of the storm on the pandemic and not, not that we're out of the woods right yet in terms of the, uh, you know, in terms of the aftermath and the impact that it has caused us and, and, and in particular in in our child care and our ability to help our families. But it's great to be back here uh, to uh, talk about a, a child tax rebate and to announce that, the, uh, that that process is already starting now uh, as a direct result of uh, working with the speaker and the Senate President, thank you Ryan for being here, uh, really working our way through a strategy that um, we're very fortunate that, uh, that we continue to have a strong economic recovery uh, first in the Northeast, second in the, in, in, um, in the country, uh, which is also related back into a really substantial surplus that was at, at, that has grown even more. And we'll certainly be sitting down with the Speaker and the Senate President very shortly about how we can continue to provide, uh, you know, really good tax relief for the, for the families that live in the, that live in, in Rhode Island. Uh, I think that uh, including the all in on the, uh, the car tax, which was clearly a something that started in the General Assembly, and I was happy to play a role in completing that. But today you're talking about uh, checks that are going to be go going out to families uh, in a time frame where we still are feeling the impact of our, you know, of the inflationary uh, movements, although I'm really happy to see that gas prices are coming down. I still, still talk to the gas stations about making sure that the margins are appropriate, because we still got a spread there in some of the margins. Uh, holding on a little too long to the margins, but now our prices are getting closer to that uh, three dollar item, and that's good. But we still know that there's a there's been a long impact about cost for families, and that's what we're here today to talk about. Is this child tax rebate, and starting today, uh, we're delivering child tax rebates of two hundred and fifty dollars per child up to three children, uh, in for Rhode Island residents making up to $100,000 for an individual or $200,000 on a joint return. That's going to help about 115,000 families in the state of Maryland <coughs> with over $40 million of, of tax relief. Uh, and when you start adding in the, the tax relief that we have been providing, uh, including you know some of the energy costs right now, we know that those are going up. So this these checks are going to help uh, families uh, on the energy costs, and we're going to continue to try to uh, stabilize that that expense as well as we're trying to recover on our economy in a real strong way and keeping our employment to the lowest levels that we've seen in decades. So our focus is on uh, uh, making the process simple, and um, with uh, a uh, tax administrator Savage here today, she's going to explain what that is. But it's it is simple. Uh, checks are going to go out file the tax return last year, checks are automatically going to go out, and uh, there's no application required, as we've said before. Rebate checks will be automatically issued to all eligible tax flyers, filers over the next several weeks. Uh, Rhode Islands can visit the Division of Taxation website uh, to use our new payment tracker to check uh, the status of their rebate. 
And as you've heard me say over and over and over again, but it bears repeating, uh, you know, that we have momentum in the state of Rhode Island like we've never seen before. And we're gonna hold on to that. And supporting parents and their children uh, during this time is how we keep the Rhode Island economy growing and how we keep the Rhode Island economy uh, employing people in good paying jobs. But as you put money back into the communities, it revolves and it revolves four or five times. So every dollar you put into a local community, uh, where does it go? It goes to buy the uh, pizza at the local pizza shop. I think I'm gonna be at a local pizza shop uh, uh, in uh, Cumberland tonight. Uh, so that's how it works. Get money out, that money stays in the community and it rotates over and over and over again. $250 per child is real money uh, that will make a real difference for many families. And I thank the speaker again, the Senate president, and the entire General Assembly for their partnership in making this proposal a reality. It's a pleasure working with each and every one of them. And we're gonna continue these programs going to make sure that our economy keeps growing. With that, I give it over to the uh, Lieutenant Governor, Sabina Matos, so for a few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, just want to say that I want to thank you, Governor McKee, the Speaker Shikaji, and the Senate President Representative here by the Chairman Pearson. Thank you for your leadership because as we have been going out in the community, number one thing that we hear from the families is how they're struggling right now financially. And sending this relief to families, especially the families with small, the small children, is gonna make a big difference. So I wanna thank um, the leadership that the governor and the General Assembly have shown because they are listening to the challenges that families are facing right now and are responding to those challenges. This is just the beginning. They have been working very hard to make sure that they can deliver for our um, communities out there. So I wanna thank you on that. Um, this is just uh, great to be in a location like this one today and, and looking at the little COVID, the little COVID and just thinking about my kids. I don't miss that time. <laughs> <laughs> right right now, they don't wanna hang, ar hang around with me anymore. I'm not cool enough, but at this time when I used to come and get my children from, from preschool, it's, um, it was really wonderful to, to be in this location. But I know that former Mayor Diosa gets to do that <laughs> now, so you're probably thinking about that right now. But um, thank you for the leadership, and thank you for choosing Warwick, where we have a wonderful Mayor Picosi. Mayor, where are you? Uh, you're hiding. <laughs> thank you so much for hosting us here, and it's truly a pleasure for me to be here with all of you, and it's truly a pleasure for me to introduce the men of the hour who just we just had the opportunity to honor and I'm so happy that we were able to honor our speaker, Joseph Shikashi. Thank you, Lieutenant Thank you, Governor. Everybody. Thank you all. It's a, it's a busy day, it's a good day, and I'm happy to be here and conclude it today. And I want to certainly acknowledge my friend, the Governor, who seems to have the most uh, popular first family. Uh, <laughs> if it's not his mother who gets the headlines, I, I, I used to say to him, he's just Dan McKee, he's not the governor anymore, he, he, he's his mom's son, and now I'm going to have to say nothing but you care his dad. So, uh, but as uh, they say, as long as it gets you the votes, governor, right. we'll take it. So, <laughs> congratulations to you. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, always a pleasure to be in your company. I thank you. Um, Senate Finance, Chairman Ryan Pearson, my good friend uh, from Cumberland. Uh, it's great to be here and to have you in Warwick. I think it's the first time you've ever been in Warwick. <laughs> but we'll have to get you more. Uh, as you aspire up the uh, leadership chain, you'll spend a lot more time in Warwick. And of course, Nina Savage. So I want everybody to tell you, you have all these important people here in Warwick. You got the press here. You're, the most important person in this room is Nina Savage. <laughs> because Nina Savage is the tax administrator for the state. So if you want your income tax refunds, or if something gets caught up, you call Nina Savage, she gets the job done for you. So you always want to be on her good side. When the governor, the Senate president, myself, we were getting together, and we meet regularly. We meet at least once a week, and we, we talk about priorities to state. And it, it's a very form, um, informal but very important meeting we have, and they've kind of morphed into lunches. And we talk about the, putting the budget together. We need to do something for everybody in Rhode Island. What can we do? 
So we looked around, you know, the hallmark of what I try to, even my campaign slogan, but it's just to bring people together to get things done. So we, we, we came together, and what could we do? So we, we looked around, and we eliminated the car tax a year early. That helped all of Rhode Island. It even helped businesses. A lot of businesses have fleet uh, 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 vehicles, and it got rid of the car tax. We increased the circuit breaker, uh, and tax exemption for elderly. We eliminated all income tax, state income tax, on military pensions. We also, <clears throat> increased the tax exemption for Social Security and pension um, income. So if you're retired, uh, you get a Social Security benefit or you get a pension, the first $20,000 in Rhode Island is now tax exempt from state income tax. And today, we are announcing, as the governor said, a $250 tax credit per child to working families of Rhode Island. And working families is classified as single filers of 100,000 or less in joint violence of 200,000 or less. And that's how we approach this budget to look at how we can help everything. We know that for working Rhode Islanders who are feeling the pinch with rising prices, every dollar matters. Today, we're putting money back in the pockets of nearly 115,000 working families with children in Rhode Island. All of these things, the things I've outlined, make a real difference in the lives of Rhode Islanders. That's what government is all about. It's, it's trying to create brighter futures for everybody and trying to help everybody so we don't leave anybody behind. I want to say thank you. I want to thank the governor. I want to thank the Senate president. He's not here, rec being uh, represented by Chairman uh, Pearson, who I've had a few meetings on budget matters with, and he continues to be a strong advocate for, for his chamber. It's working together that we, we get good things done. Thank you very much, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Senate Finance Chairman Chairman Ryan Pearson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Governor, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, it's great to join you here today. Uh, as the Speaker mentioned, uh, we in the state uh, had significant resources uh, available this year. And it wasn't by mistake. The resources that we had uh, were due to Rhode Island's comeback and recovery from COVID far faster than we ever anticipated. And that really has to do with a series of decisions made by the governor, the speaker, the president, and the entire assembly that gave us the resources uh, that we have and we have had uh, through this budget cycle. We did want to make sure that we did two things. We wanted to care for Rhode Islanders today, but also make investments in our future. And we did. We made investments across our schools, our healthcare system, affordable housing. And these are the kinds of investments that will pay dividends uh, for Rhode Islanders for many, many years to come. But also importantly, caring for Rhode Islanders today uh, meant putting together a tax relief package. Uh, many of the things the speaker mentioned are intentionally put together uh, in a package to ensure that every Rhode Islander feels some relief from the state this year, whether it be the car tax, uh, whether it be the income tax exemption expansion, something is in this budget for every Rhode Islander and to make sure that we provide them with that relief. And these checks today uh, are a piece of that. And Rhode Island uh, has not been spared uh, from the many costs in higher, going higher from inflation. Uh, COVID really put everything uh, on the block, uh, put our supply chains across the world in, out of order, uh, made workers short. Uh, but all these different things come together today that we can somewhat counteract these forces in Rhode Island with these uh, relief measures. And so on top of that, uh, I would also say that we've focused in on our small businesses. Uh, the amount of money, we put $100 million into the Unemployment Trust Fund, uh, which has also had the impact of reducing taxes on many of our small businesses. And so it is great news today uh, that we were able to see these checks go out. Uh, I know it was top of mind for our colleagues in the Senate as we really thought through how could we uh, respond to our constituents seeking relief uh, from the state. And while none of these things uh, in of themselves will solve the issues that are facing uh, all Rhode Islanders, the package of them is intentionally put together uh, to do our best job that we can. Uh, and as Mrs. McKee might say on this one, Governor, yes. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, you know my mom. I do. Uh, I've, had, I've had the privilege to know Mrs. McKee for before she was a television star. Uh, and uh, she, I know she's been a very uh, important force uh, for you, Governor. Um, before I turn it over to Director Savage, though, I do want to uh, just quickly state that, uh, as the speaker said, nothing happens uh, without the team that puts that together. And I know 
Uh, the directors joined today, and I want to acknowledge uh, Carlita, Dan, Kim, and Amanda, who were in the back, uh, who really helped uh, drive a lot of the efforts and the work that actually goes behind getting these checks out. Uh, and so I want to say thank you to them, uh, and thank you, uh, Director Savage, for leading them. Uh, and with that, Director Savage, I'll introduce you. Thank you. Governor McKee, Speaker Shikarji, uh, Chairman uh, Pearson, and Lieutenant Governor Mike Matos. Um, I, none of this happens without a team of good people behind you. And I just want to say, uh, before I get into the details, Dan Clements, Carlita Anicelli, and Kim Zario, are the, and Amanda Taroki, are the brains behind our operation on this project. And I want to thank them. Um, and thank you all for entrusting the Division of Taxation with this important responsibility. As um, the Governor and Speaker and Chairman have said, uh, all of this has been made seamless. We have our website, www.tax.ri.gov. If you go, it will direct you to the child tax rebate page. On that page is uh, all the information you need. There's also a tool where's my child tax rebate you go on and you can um, get a status if you've been approved it will tell you that it's processing if your check is being mailed it will tell you that if you're not approved it, it directs you to an email and a telephone so we have tried to make the operational um, uh, dissemination of these checks as seamless as possible and we're hoping um, a couple of things to keep in mind if you've changed address, there's a change of address form. If you um, have any questions, first use that rebate tracker. Where uh, we have staffing challenges like the rest of the world, and so if you can just be patient, most all of the checks will be issued in October, one week at a time, in the order that you have filed your tax returns. Earliest filers will get their checks first, and then. There's another round of checks that will go out after the October 17th extension date, and those checks will be issued in December. So all the first batch of checks are going out now, next batch in December. That's all I have, and thank you again. That's good news. Uh, excuse me, say the, do you say the, who don't qualify? If you didn't file a tax return for tax year 2021, or you don't have any children, or you're a, a not a Rhode, Rhode Island domiciliary, that is, you haven't lived in Rhode Island for over 183 days, you wouldn't qualify. And other checks going out in December, those are for people who filed extensions? Yes, that's correct. But otherwise, everyone will have their checks before election day. Yes, we have about a, over 100, about 105,000 checks going out in October. Do you have a specific day when they're, they're first hitting the mail? This week. This week, yes. All right, thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Governor, how Governor. Governor, can we'll we ask questions. you a question? We'll take questions on the side. On the side.